Thank you, thank you. I have a very simple message and a couple of very simple solutions, although they're solutions that uh, very few people want to hear. The message is that if the ocean dies, we die. We don't live on this planet with a dead ocean. It is the planet ocean. You can call it the earth, but it is mainly water. And the ocean is the life support system of this spaceship earth. It provides everything we need, it regulates climate, and for millions of years it's worked perfectly. It's worked perfectly because of biodiversity and the interdependence of the species within it. But a few hundred years ago, a species that dwelt on land, our species, went into the sea and began to take, and take, and take, and give nothing back. And because of that, the ocean is dying. We don't really see it, we don't really pay much attention to it, but the diminishment has been severe. Since 1950, we've lost 40% of our plankton population. We've lost 90% of our fishes. 50% of the biomass on this planet has been removed since 1950. 1950, the year I was born, there were three billion people on the planet. There is now 7.5 billion people on the planet. We cannot continue to take from the ocean more and more because it is simply going to collapse. The solutions, the first solution is we have to revitalize biodiversity in the ocean. And to do that, we have to shut down all industrialized fishing operations in the world and we have to stop subsidizing with government subsidies these highly industrialized fishing operations. I was raised in a fishing village in eastern Canada. We did not have super trawlers, 100 kilometer gill nets, long lines. We didn't have those things because they weren't needed, because there were plenty of fish back then. Now we're investing hundreds of millions of euros to go out and get what is left, and the fish have no safe place. In Polynesia, they used to have a thing called taboo where the shaman would designate a bay or an area as taboo. No fishing, 10 years, 15 years, and they were very strict. If you were caught fishing, it was the death penalty. Why? Because they knew that their survival depended upon those fish surviving. There are no taboo areas in the world today. In fact, Rayathon sells a fish finder, and their motto is, the fish can run but they can't hide. There is simply no safe place. And in fact, we have marine sanctuaries around the world. We've been working in the Galapagos and Cocos Island off Costa Rica to protect those marine sanctuaries. And what marine sanctuaries have become is simply a magnet for illegal fishing because the fishermen know that they can find what they want there and there's very, very little enforcement because there's a lack of economic and political will to enforce international conservation law. For 10 years, toothfish poachers operated with impunity in the Southern Ocean, and nobody did anything about it. In the waters off of the Kerguelens, in the waters off of Antarctica. This last year, we sent two boats down there, and we chased them out of the area. We chased one of them, the Thunder, for 110 days from the Southern Ocean until it ran out of fuel off of Sao Tome and then its captain scuttled the vessel right in front of us and sent this million dollar, multi-million dollar vessel to the bottom to destroy the evidence. But we were able to board it and get the evidence, and this week, the officers of the Thunder are on trial in San Tomi, and my officers are testifying against them. We have the laws to protect our oceans, but we simply don't have the government will or to go out and enforce those laws. And a lot of times, people are just paid off to get whatever they want. Why do we have pirates in Somalia? Because the real pirates went in there years ago and took everything. And I'm talking about the Asian and the European fishing fleets. They took everything and drove these people into impoverishment and drove them into piracy. And we will have piracy in Mauritania and Senegal and these countries in a few years if we do the same thing to them. We have to shut down all of these industrialized fishing operations. We need taboo on this planet for the next 10, 20, 30, maybe even 40 years. The ocean has to be revitalized. Why has plankton populations plummeted? 
And why have we lost 40%? Simple, we killed the whales. 300,000 blue whales alone were exterminated in the 20th century, and that's just one species. Now consider the blue whale. One blue whale every day drops three tons of manure into the sea. That's a lot of crap, but it's very much full of nitrogen and iron, and it feeds the plankton. The whales are the farmers of the sea. They provide the nutrients for the plankton, and the plankton is the foundation of life in the ocean. So we need to bring back the whales. That means Japan, Iceland, Norway, Denmark have stopped, they have to stop killing whales. We have to protect them. The more whales, the more plankton. We need to stop killing marine mammals and seabirds. Fishermen have this idea that the seals are eating their fish, our fish. It's not our fish, it's their fish. And for millions of years, they got along just fine. When Jacques Cartier went from uh, Saint Malo in 1532 to sail to Canada, there was no shortage of fish, and he described it in his logbooks. But there were 45 million seals in the North Atlantic. With that incredible amount of seals, not to mention the fact the Atlantic gray whale, which is now extinct, the sea mink, which is now extinct, the giant auk, which is now extinct, they were there too. And yet there was no shortage of fish because you need a healthy marine mammal population, a healthy sea bird population to have a healthy fish population because of that interdependence of species, because seals target one species, which target another species. If you cut down seal populations, you increase capelin, herring, and mackerel populations, causing more predation on young cod, for example. We're taking so much fish out of the ocean, and it's not just for our use. 40% of all of the fish that we take out of the ocean, we do not even eat. We feed it to pigs and chickens and domestic salmon and house cats. We've now created a world where your domestic house cats are eating more fish than all of the seals in the sea, and yet we blame the seals for eating the fish. Chickens on factory farms in Europe alone are eating more fish than all the world's albatross and puffins. This is outrageous. It's, an e it's ecological insanity. And yet, for the most part, it's out of sight, and it's out of mind. We don't think about it. The second solution, which nobody really wants to hear, is another simple one, although a lot of people find it very difficult. That is, we have to switch to a plant-based diet. 65 billion animals a year are being killed in slaughterhouses. And I already mentioned the fact that they're being fed fish. That contributes more greenhouse gases than the entire transportation industry. It's the leading cause of groundwater pollution, the leading cause of water wastage, one of the major causes of dead zones in the ocean. We have to simply stop eating animals which are free and produced in that way. Again, it's a simple solution, but not one that many people want to hear. We're going to have the Paris uh, Conference on Climate here at the end of November. People are going to gather and discuss the solutions. Those are two things they will not be discussing. I don't know what they will be discussing, but I, ha I did attend the UN Conference on the Environment in 1992 in Rio de Janeiro. I attended the UN Conference on the Environment in 1972 in Stockholm, Sweden. And everything that was discussed and every promise made None of them were acted upon, every single one. These are conferences where people get together, have photo ops, pat each other on the back, and promise the future which they can never deliver. However, there will be another conference, and that will be all of the NGOs and individuals around the world who will get together and discuss ideas. Because how do you change the world? Through a diversity within a movement, just as there is the strength if an ecosystem is in diversity, the strength of is, is in the movement. All throughout history, social change has come about because of the passion, the courage, and the imagination of individuals getting together. It's we who can change the world. We can't depend upon governments to do it. They never have, and they never will. We have to get out there, however, and get the politicians to send out 
the navies to do the job that the navies should be doing. As Jacques Cousteau told me in 1992, he said, if the navies of the world had any sense of moral responsibility, they would be out there protecting the oceans instead of playing their silly little war games with each other as our oceans die. There are poachers out there, 40% of all of the fish being taken is being taken illegally. We have to stop that. The bluefin tuna, the red tuna as it's called here, is in danger of going down. And here's the thing, they're investing in its extinction. They want it to go extinct. Why? There's 15 years supply of tuna in Japanese warehouses right now. And the more tuna they get in the warehouse, the less tuna there are in the sea. And the less tuna there are in the sea, the more valuable the ones in the warehouse. And if they go extinct, and they're sitting on 10 to 15 years supply of tuna, they're sitting on billions of dollars in profits. And they know that, and they will simply go on to something else. They do not care about the future. They don't even think about it. In fact, human society as a whole doesn't think very much about the future. What's this world going to be like in 100 years? In fact, even 50 years. We don't really think too much about it. But I can tell you right now, if we don't do something by 2048, and this is according to uh, the United Nations, FAO, according to oceanographers around the world, if we don't do something about it, by 1948 there will be no fishing industry anywhere in the world because there will be no fish. But it'll get worse than that. Not only will we lose the fish, we will lose the very ability of our oceanic ecosystems to keep this world safe, to regulate temperature, to regulate climate change. We can solve the problem, but we have to be able to take those measures, which I think are quite simple. Plant-based diet, and let's stop industrialized fishing. Yes, people are going to lose a lot of money, but I'd rather that all of those corporations lose their billions of dollars than that we lose this planet and have no future at all. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you.